Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new video. So today we're going to have a look at um, team games, particularly 2v2 and predominantly we're going to have a look at Fallen Empire. So if you've been following my uh, live stream recently, you'll have seen I've been playing quite a lot of team games, 2v2s, 3v3s, um, some 3v3 challenges um, and some 2v2 fun games like here's some games from September that we're watching at the moment um, and I've played a lot and been thinking about how to make the strategy guide and come up with like six top tips that um, I can probably provide to uh, to maybe like the semi-pro players or the up-and-coming players who want to be uh, want to improve their TV2 or just want to improve in general or if you just uh, enjoy TV2, this is um, a guide for you. So I come up with six things. Um, if I'm completely doing this on the fly, so if I come up with anything else halfway through or whatever, then I'll just pop that in. But I come up with six core things to start off with. So the first thing I've got on my list is. Um, uh, just getting to know your map and getting to know where you're going to be placing tunnels, where you're going to be placing war factories. Uh, for example, um, like on Tournament Desert, you might go two supplies with China. You might build one on your, your safe supply and then you might build one on the other. Uh, and then you might immediately go two war factories. That's generally what uh, a good build or a China, China nuke would do on Tournament Desert. But for example, on um, Fallen Empire, for example, it might be slightly different. So generally, you want to be doing probably um, two war factories. Sorry, you want to be doing one supply and then two war factories and then upgrade to um, another supply, which generally you probably don't see on Tournament Desert. Very rarely do you see that. But on Fallen Empire, I think that's quite common to actually see the two war factories built and then the, third, and then the uh, second supply built. Uh, also, you want to be thinking about where you're going to be building mines. So generally, like a nuke will be... Uh, building a war factory here and that's so you can build mines and the mines can cover that whole general area so you'll see nuke is actually against um he's against the usa but he's also against the gla so gla will often send a terror tech and it will go somewhere around uh, probably going to be going for that war factory and it's quite common you'll often see mines uh, not only does it protect that war factory it protects that whole area i actually think he's built out a bit too far left and the tech could sneak through there but generally um you want to be knowing where to build um where to build slightly differently to your standard 1v1, so like Tournament Desert, Lagoon, all them different types of maps, you're going to be wanting to adapt it slightly to um, a Fallen Empire. Uh, for example, on GLA, which I, I'm playing on this uh, particular particular map, on this particular game, I'm building my normal tunnel in my base, but I'm not going to be building um, uh, a tunnel in the center like on uh, Tournament Desert. I'm going to be doing one at my uh, unsafe supply and then I'm going to be doing one to block off this bridge, which I suppose you could call out the center in like Tournament Desert. Um, so just like knowing your tunnel positions and stuff, in this case I've actually gone for an aggressive tunnel and uh, in the enemy's base because this guy here is air and when you get an air you generally want to be probably doubling that player, especially when we've got a nuke versus air, so the new, the air is going to have a massive advantage, so you probably want to double a double player, which is a, a tip I'm going to come, into, come on to in a bit. Um, so yeah, the first tip is basically knowing where to, um, where to build your structures and stuff like that. Um, again, you, like, like normal maps, you can box um, box workers in and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, one other thing. Let's say let's say the top two players in this case were China, and one of you is going to be going the unsafe supply. You definitely want to be building that war factory 95% of the time uh, before you build that supply, especially if you're against another China. Because let's say you are against um, uh, let's say it's a new chimera all around and this this player here, if he builds a war factory there first and sends a flamer straight across um, and starts flaming that supply, if you've built a supply first and then build that war factory, you're going to have no units to defend that. So I often see players losing that first supply and getting flamed down straight away. Generally, want to build in that war factory and then the supply. I know it's only a tiny little difference, but it's the difference between saving that supply and not, which can cost you the game. And in quite often, uh, most cases, does cost you the game. So I know that's only a little point and. It's very basic, but um, that's that's kind of the basics to this um, to this this idea. USA can generally um, do the same as it does on every map. Two supplies. In this case, he's actually chosen to go for that supply, but USA generally will go for that supply. I, I'm guessing in this game, Rage called it, and Rage chose to go safe to stop the battle masses that uh, Nuke could be building and sending them into the worker line that will cause loads of problems. So in this case, they've adapted and. Um, let the USA go there instead, and instead of Rage is covering that with um, with tunnels. That's good communication, which is actually another point of mine on this tutorial. Um, 
between those players. So yeah, that's a, that's a, a good tip. It's uh, learning the map and learning to where you, where to place your buildings and uh, the general uh, general position of buildings. Um, so the most second tip is actually um, why two v two is more complex than you like your average one v one. So, for example, I'm going to pause again just so I don't get distracted. Let's say you are this guy here, you're uh, Fargo in this game, and you're Air, and you're fighting against uh, Nuke. So generally that's going to be quite an easy matchup. You're going to be making Vs, and you're going to be uh, generally just blowing up uh, anything he sends at you. So Gats, um, he's probably not going to be making Inf because they're expensive, so he's probably going to be making Gats and Battle Masters. That's all you've got to worry about. So you could maybe just do, just do Vs. You could maybe even go for an airfield and like one one raptor kills a battlemaster. Um, so generally that's going to be quite an easy match here. But as soon as you see there's a GLA as well, that, that uh, army composition that's going to be coming at you suddenly becomes a little bit more complex. So you, suddenly you've got techs in the, in the mix and you've got RPGs in the mix. So you maybe want to slightly vary your play a little bit as well. Also I could be making quads, which is probably going to put him off making raptors. So USA is actually a bad example because all you can really do is make Vs. But you've just got to be wary that there could be techs and there could be gats and there could be battlemasters and tunnels and quads and whatever else so it's more of a varied stuff so let's take into account um um, the, the nuke, for example, is probably a better, a better idea. So you're a nuke and you're against air force. Let's say it's a 1v1. The air force is probably going to be making Vs, which is generally what every USA does in every uh, in every uh, in every game. Nice one at EA Games. Um, so you, you're probably going to be thinking, do I make battlemasters and do I make gats, which are easily killed by um, Vs and raptors, or do I want to maybe do something a bit more um, different? So do I make a troop crawler and send that at him and let his Vs fight them while I sneak a gat down the side? But if you're going to be making a troop crawler, you've got to look what the enemy is as well. So the enemy is um, toxin, GLA toxin. So if you sent a troop crawler, which costs 1400 which is quite expensive, it's nearly the same price as two battle masters, just $200 short. Um, one technical, for example, can run over a load of red guard, and that could go massively wrong. So that straight away, it's becoming more complex. You can't just do your standard troop crawler or loads of infantry. You can't do troop crawler and rockets. Let's say he was China. A good idea against against um, USA in a one v one is uh, troop crawler and rockets. You can't be doing that because the um, you've got to think what the enemy is as well. All the toxin needs to do is pop a few quads, even um, scorpions that can shoot. Um, the toxin or even one tunnel you come against the troop crawler and the rockets are going to have a massively bad time against that so the, the 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 nuke now is actually very limited on what he can do he can only be really making gats and uh battle masters which is exactly what he's doing in this case there a battle master is going for the supply but because this south team has been very smart and put the um supply nice and safe up here um and rage is covering that chinook there's nothing really that can get there and do any damage unless you parked a gat like there i suppose that could be a bit of a weak point um, yeah, so this, the, that, that's the next thing really, it's army compositions. For example, we're going to check um, a diff different replay and how much more complicated um, RP army compositions are in comparison to 1v1. So again, we're just going to pause it straight away and uh, we're going to have a look at these armies. So this is a good example. Um, so let's say you're Rango here and it's a 1v1 against Rage at the top which is super weapon. So tank versus super weapon, what are you going to be wanting to do? So you're probably going to be in the 1v1 making troop crawlers uh, and gats. That's probably all you're going to be making or maybe just gats, then a fast propaganda center and ECMs and you're probably going to be uh, winning that super weapon general in the most games like on Lagoon, um, on Tournament Desert, uh, depending on how the start of the game goes. But that's generally all you're going to be wanting to do, gats probably. Uh, but then as soon as you see um, th this guy here, Gem Master, on the right is GLA. If he has even one tunnel there, or one tunnel there, one tunnel there, or even sends one scorpion or... Um yeah, a few scorpions, then your gats are suddenly going to have a massively hard time. They can't beat scorpions and Vs at the same time. So you're going to, at one point, probably be wanting to mix in... Um, mixing the odd Battlemaster or mixing the odd Outpost when you normally wouldn't do that against the super weapon. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, if if Rage and Gem Master were both the same army, super weapon and super weapon, that had become far easier for your brain to work out what you need to do because it's similar to a 1v1. You're only going to be against uh, Vs and EMPs. That's pretty much the only thing you're going to be against. But because it's a mixture of GLA and super weapon, it's more complex and it's harder to... Um, to work out what you need to build. You need to be a little bit smarter and um, 
in a, in a 1v1, in a 2v2 or rather. Um, and for me, I'm super, I'm sorry, I'm laser against GLA, so I'm going to be wanting to make Vs, but then also this guy is um, super weapon, so I've got to be careful. He could drop me, he could fill uh, three RPGs inside a... Um, uh, inside a Chinook and drop it on top of me and that could kill me. Let's actually see what Rengo chooses to go for. I'm interested in what Rengo is doing here. So you see he's making the um, two war factories there before he's actually going to be making the um, uh, the third, uh, sorry second supply. I keep saying third, I mean second. So he's going to be building both of those first and then he's going to make this, uh, the, the next supply. So that's how it's slightly different to 1v1. You very rarely see that in 1v1. He is going for Gats and actually weirdly going for the GLA it looks like. He's actually going to help me and I think I've gone for a drop. I've gone for a drop in this case. Um, what, let's see if he does... So he's made a flamer. You see a flamer? You probably wouldn't be always making that against a super weapon. You probably would never be making that actually. So he's actually going to fight the GLA in this case. So it's different. You're going to be building different units and uh, stuff like that. Let's just have a look at another example. I'm just um, wary of how long this video is going to be. I'm trying to keep it um, as short and sweet as possible, straight to the point. Let's have a look at another example. So I'm Tox here, and let's say it's a 1v1 against Air. Actually, that's a bad example because this guy's USA. But. Um, I suppose it's slightly different because I know this guy here, Fargo, has to go for Vs. There's nothing else he can go to go for. But Rage could go for Comanches. And actually, yeah, let's see if he does go for Comanches. Uh, is he going to do it? He's going for a, a, a airfield. Yes. Yeah, so in this case, it's going to be two different. Um, two different. Oh, but what the hell is uh, Fargo doing there? He's actually left that on 91%. Probably going to go and kill that tunnel. Um, yeah, so in this case, I'm going to have a, a more of a hard time. I'm actually doing two war factories. Um, I'm actually going to have a more of a hard time in this game because um, I'm going to have to. I'm going to be building technicals to fight the Vs, and also I don't know it, but I'm going to have to be eventually building quads. So I'm going to have to be building a mixture of the two things here. Whereas if I was just against air and I saw he was going for airfield, I'd probably just be making quads to fight that. So it's a, a, again a more complex uh, army composition that I'm going to have to be building. Humanity in the meantime is also GLA, so he's going to actually be thinking exactly the same as me. Uh, meanwhile, for the South team, it's easy for them to uh, army composition wise because they're against two toxins. We're both toxin, uh, whereas they are going for a more varied uh, approach. Uh, I've actually gone two war factories, which is another thing you can uh, often see in 2v2, especially if they don't scout it, which I don't think they have. No, they haven't scouted it. Whereas in 1v1, you probably wouldn't see that that often. In fact, I've, I can't even remember the last time I've seen that in a 1v1. And anytime anyone does anything against me uh, that is like that, then you can just drop a dozer and um, uh, harass the enemy's workers and then they're left on no money. And a quad and a technical is going to take ages to kill that dozer. But in this case, my mate's actually tunneled there. Humanity is actually tunneled there, so actually covering me and able, enabling me to do this build order. So again, a little bit more complex, and that's the build order wise as well. So you get the idea. Um, army composition is uh, slightly different. I'm just going to load into another replay. Just want to talk about the next point. <clears throat> um, so actually, there's one with SRS Exile in that uh, I actually want to show you uh, if I can find it. Uh, I think it's that one. Okay, so uh, it's not this actually this replay, but my next point basically is going to be on um, uh, different build orders and trust in your opponent. So, for example, let's say, I don't know if it's this replay, let's hope we get lucky. Oh, I think it might actually be this replay. Yeah, it is this replay. How lucky was that? This replay, this is a very, if players were enabled to choose their army rather than taking random like we are now, you would probably be choosing stealth and air, which by the way I think is probably the hardest combo to beat in 2v2. It's either stealth and air or it's either tank and air. That I think it's actually tank and air is the best, is the best combo, but stealth and air is definitely one of the top contenders, probably the second best. And in the meantime, we've got nuke and air here. <clears throat> now, if I'm going to go, I'll tell you what the enemy's going to do straight away. I can tell you. I, in fact, I told SRS Exile in this game what they're going to do. So Rengo's going to go for Raptors, and uh, Rage is going to tunnel him and make loads of quads and protect him. And the Raptors are going to be used to either kill me or to kill uh, the nuke. We've got the worst armies here by far because of that nuke, but it's still okay ish. But, the, for, for example, my third point here basically is a trust. So if I go for Raptors here and. Rage just rushes me normally with quads and whatever. I can easily die by going quads, uh, by going raptors. But 
if I trust my opponent in order to build two war factories and send me Gats across the map, which I actually asked him to do in this game, and he did. Um, we still do go on to lose this game, but that's besides the point. Um, I can actually talk about that as well, but it's about trusting your opponent. So, if, for example, if I don't trust SR Exile to, SRS Exile to do that, I'm not going to be going Raptors, but, and then I'd be stupid to do that because this guy is just going to make Raptors and he's going to kill me. So... This is about complete trust and teamwork. I need SRX Exile in this in this game, and Rengo needs it too. That we're, sorry, Rengo and I need this, and we need our mates to cover us. And uh, basically, Rengo needs to be tunneled, and I need to be sent Gats, uh, just Gats, uh, to protect from um, either the odd quad or worker, or um, the enemy uh, Raptors. And what I need to be doing is just focusing wholly on Raptors and making them. Let's say, for example, I didn't go Raptors. Let's say I just played this like a normal 1v1. I just sold my command center. I went uh, War Factory uh, Barracks. Uh, the first Raptor's going to come along, and he's going to kill one Dozer. Uh, two Dozers, possibly. Two Dozers with one Raptor, which can easily be done. If you look at my Split 5 video, that's easily possible. Then the second Raptor's going to come. And it's going to hit the power. Going to leave it on 5 HP. The third Raptor's going to come and kill the power completely. And then we'll be left with no power. No power against uh, a GLA. That's probably what's going to happen. Um... Let's say that um, that happened. I'm probably going to be losing to uh, Rage in this case. <clears throat> so in this game, um, Exile is, is sending me Gats, and that's to cover against the Raptors that do that do come. Um, here, I'm spending un unnecessary money making fire bases because I actually didn't trust that um, Exile was going to send me enough units to protect me against Rage's attack. I I want to be 100% focusing on killing uh, Rango here, um, and I I wasn't 100 even though I told him and I, and I. I did trust him, like part of me said I want to survive, I want to win this game, so I built five bases, which meant I didn't have enough money to keep up the 100% production of Raptors that I needed to, which is one of the reasons why we lose this game. Also, there's a lack of trust from um, uh, Exile making Battle Masters here, he doesn't need to make Battle Masters. What I should be doing here is helping, well, we should be on Skype for a start, and he should be telling me, there's a technical in my base, come and kill it with a Raptor, and he doesn't need to be chasing that, or that can be a Gat, and he could be chasing that still, actually. He doesn't need to be making Battle Masters, because Battle Masters go down in one shot from Raptors, whereas a Gat takes two shots, uh, two, two full shot Raptors. Um, also, in this case, um, actually, it's me letting this side down, really. I should be killing that... Um, I should have killed that uh, technical before it even got to Exile's base and helped him out. And Exile just needs to, he doesn't need to be making that, he doesn't need to be making that. Um, he needs to be just making Gats and uh, Raptors and then pushing forward and attacking together. So it's, that's another thing actually, simultaneous attacking. So when the um, when the enemy is engaged on the, on the ground, so when his Gats are fighting the quads, um, <coughs> my quads can come and help. You see that one Battlemaster went down. Uh, whereas if he had like three or four four gats there instead, he could be engaging those tunnel, engaging those units, killing off those uh, quads, and then I can come in with my uh, raptors. So actually, this game does go on a little bit longer, but that's basically my point made is uh, about trusting your opponent in order to pull off a, a stronger combined build order. Uh, number four, I kind of did already mention it there. I mentioned Skype, so you'll see. I did a beacon in that game. Actually, why am I restarting this game? You'll see I did a beacon in that game. When I beaconed that tunnel, I was going to kill the tunnel, and then he was going to go in with a Battlemaster or whatever. Um, if you have Skype, you, you can still use beacons when you have Skype, but Skype is so much faster by speaking it and still playing the game, doing your actions, rather than pressing uh, backspace, typing out, I'm going to uh, kill his arms dealer now, or I'm going to kill tunnels now. If you're using Skype, if you want to play on the top level, I... Uh, Highly recommend you know, Skyping, get a mate who speaks the same language as you, <clears throat> um, get a good quality mate, that's another tip as well, um, who's as good as you, or I actually recommend playing with someone who's slightly better than you, so you're always up in your game. Um, go into a different kind of map, uh, but yeah, Skype is, um, is a good idea, because for example, um, actually I'm not playing in this game, this is actually another game between other players, <coughs> for example, um, I don't know who's playing together, Rage and Size playing together, yeah, Rage and Size are playing together here, so they are both super weapons, uh, sorry, laser and super weapon, now I'll, I'll guarantee you what they're probably typing to each other right now in the in the chat when they were playing this game is Rage is probably saying, right, we need to double double the air which is crazy which is um, a strong TVT player if you know if you know crazy <clears throat> he's probably going to be typing that in the keyboard so rather than typing that be on Skype and be saying it while you're building your stuff and so you're not cutting back at any time um, so yeah Skype I believe helps massively 
um, if you are GLA, you generally want to be tunneling your mate all the time. Let's see if Google tunnels here. I don't believe he's going to do actually. This is a bad example. Google is not tunneling his mate like you should be doing. I think they, uh, they expected that Google was going to get doubled because uh, weirdly he hasn't tunneled his mate. But for example, let's say, let's choose a different uh, different replay. <coughs> um, where are we now? Where are we? Let's go to... I don't know what we haven't clicked on. Let's click on this replay. I don't know if we've seen this already. Okay, perfect example. <coughs> so let's say uh, Gem Master here is playing a 1v1. He's against me as Air Force with China. So he's at a severe army, army disadvantage anyway. But um, what is a good build order that you could be doing in a 1v1? Uh, a good army composition for China against um, against the USA, like we were saying before, is Troop Crawler and loads of rockets. So And then maybe a few gats behind. So he's going to probably want to do a Troop Crawler first, maybe do um, the War Factory Barracks here. Spam loads of infantry out and be sending them slowly across the map and eventually get here. And that's going to be like a death ball ready for the Vs to um, walk into and die. Um, Air's probably a bad example because Air's super strong anyway. <coughs> you can just use the point defense lasers to uh, stop the uh, stop the rockets. But let's say he, I was just USA in this game. He could be doing a troop crawler and could have a good chance of, against winning against the USA. However, as soon as you now mix in uh, Rango over here, he's uh, Toxin. If he just sends one tech, which costs 500 for, um, for Toxin. If he just sends one tech and sends it all the way over here, <clears throat> um, and runs over a few infantry or sends like three techs which costs 1500 which actually isn't that much or even simply just builds one tunnel builds it one tunnel there really quick or builds it back here then that's going to cause so much problems to those infantry that's going to make his life so much harder uh, tox uh, air by the way is another one of the strongest combinations <clears throat> Me, meanwhile, I'm going to be making, um, in this game I think I go Comanches actually, but um, what I'd normally be doing in a 1v1 against the China is probably Vs and Rockets um, and just like standard USA, nice one EA Games, and um, just beating that China just with Vs. But then uh, I've got to think later on China is probably going to be getting MiGs and also at the same time Rage is probably going to have quads and tentacles. So again, the army, army composition thing is going into it. Um, <clears throat> But basically that was the fifth tip to if GLA always tunnel your mate mega early. In this one we actually go for a slightly different build order. I actually tell Rango to go for two war factions, which again you hardly see in a 2v2. But um, <clears throat> meanwhile I'm going Comanches. I actually let Rango die in this one but then go on to win it and say call the glory. Sorry about that Rango if you are watching. Um, <clears throat> yeah so tunnel your mate Meg really generally the strategy this is a bad example again I had to trawl through loads of replays to try and find this but uh, tunneling your mate uh, super early because um, for example that tunnel probably only costs well, no it, it actually only costs $800 so you build, um, build a tunnel for $800 but that $800 could be the situation between life and death for your partner so let's say in this case Gem Master did go for the troop crawler and I went these um, if Rango did tunnel me, he could save save my life in this game. But if he didn't tunnel me, it could cost me the game, and then probably Rango would then get two v one and lose. <clears throat> so um, um, yeah, tunneling your mate uh, super early is another another top tip. So my last tip is actually. Um, Always to double one guy. Um, so, if you, especially if you want to make it in the top in the top uh, scene among the top players, let's actually uh, actually this is a perfect example. Yeah, this is the replay I'm thinking of. So, always doubling one guy. So, me and humanity are playing here with uh, what we got GLA and nuke, and then we've got infantry and super weapon. We actually lose this game, and I'll show you why we lose it. It's because of me, and because we're not on Skype as well, actually. So Rage is actually gonna just bunker up, and actually do a massive drop on top of humanity, and then um, Boyka's gonna go and attack humanity as well. So this drop here is going to kill the dozer, it's going to cause massive damage when of course in a 1v1 this can't happen because at the same time humanity's now got to be thinking he's he's what is he nuke against the inf which is hard anyway but then he's got a USA on him as well. That um, He actually did beacon it but I think I missed that beacon, I don't think I got the notification of it. Meanwhile I'm just playing it like a 1v1 being completely stupid and meanwhile I'm letting uh, humanity get killed. So humanity is getting killed. Um, 
um, and I'm too late to react. So this is why tunneling your mate mega early. I haven't done it in this situation, so don't do this. Don't do as I do in this game. Um, if I'd have just simply done a one tunnel and just maybe sent out uh, two techs or whatever to to kill these and stop the supply and that wolf actually going down, we probably I probably could have saved humanity and we probably could have even won this game. But I let him die and then I try and TV one this and then I I lose. So. Um, doubling your mate, doubling one guy really hard which is exactly what they've done, they've basically killed humanity and he's basically useless now because he's lost He's lost so much so quick, I'm going to come in now and try and help but I'm actually too late, if I'd have just tunneled him really quick and just supported him um, this game could have gone a lot different we do manage to hold on and whatever but we do go on to lose so yeah that's my top tips for um, like a quick start tutorial to 2v2 um, I would recommend playing it a lot, always uh, using teamwork, get Skype if possible, um, learn the, maybe the slightly different variation of build orders, for example even on this map, um, infantry, you're going to be wanting build, building bunkers at different spots than you would do on like Tournament Desert, this is why I always recommend to play people to always play on uh, different maps rather than just playing Tournament Desert over and over again, or rather than just playing Fallen Empire over and over again. You should be able to just load up a map for the first time and generally every map is the same so you're always going to have probably two supplies which this map has if you've never seen it before this is one of the newish maps you're always going to have two supplies and you're all like i have here i've got this supply and this supply just generally always look out for that rarely you will get the odd map where you get one supply only um, and in that case you're going to maybe want to do something different but some 1v1 maps have that so maybe that's an another video I can do um, and so generally yeah you're always going to have two supplies and you're always going to have oil somewhere on the map so there's one oil there's one oil and the odd uh, other building or maybe the odd extra supply which in this case there's an odd extra supply there We're just like tournament desert though where you've got one supply two supply and then you can expand to the middle for example so um, yeah I always recommend to people to play a varied amount of maps and then these slightly different build orders. So yeah, I know that's pretty quick, pretty um, pretty full on and a lot to take in. Hopefully that gives you a quick idea to uh, TV2 and how it can be slightly different to 1v1. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to give a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Twitch because uh, if you haven't been following me on Twitch uh, then you will have missed out on a few uh, live streams recently. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Guys, GG and I'll see you next time.